Now let us proceed to the next session, that is multi-GPU training using Horivot, given by Gunter Röth. Hello and welcome everybody to this PyTorch webinar. My name is Gunter Röth and I work as a senior solution architect in NVIDIA. In my presentation, I will show you how to implement multi-GPU training by using Horivot, an open software library that has shown scalability at data center range. As a motivation, I will present a couple of used cases or major successes of deep learning throughout the last year. In 2015, using 152 layers of the ResNet architecture, Microsoft was able to beat human possession for computer vision. This network has 60 million parameters and needs roughly seven exaflops for training. One year later, Baidu, proposed DeepSpeech 2, a superhuman voice recognition. And uh, here the network was built of 300 million parameters and needs roughly 20 ex exaflops to train. In 2017, Google announced that the famous Google Neural Machine Translation project will be done only on deep learning. And the goal is here to have a direct translation of any web, uh, website in any language indirectly into any other language. This network is built of 8,700 million parameters and needs 100 exaflops for training. From a lot of empirical studies, we found that using more training data improves the generalization. This was actually confirmed by a publication from Baidu in 2017. This graph ranges from the best guess error to the final irreducible error on the right and allows us to pick up the number of examples that we will need to reach a desired generalization error. Be careful here, in the middle it is actually a log-log scale. If you want more accuracy, we need to train with an exponential growing number of examples. These scaling laws have been actually confirmed in some publication. You see here in the middle the data set size that is growing and closely aligned with the number of parameters that has to scale as well. Using more and more training data sets on bigger and bigger networks needs of course more and more computational power and this is plot here on the left. You see that you will have to scale the computational resources at data center scale. The only way to use all resources is to use multi-GPU training. We have actually two possibilities here. The first one on the right is called model parallelism. And uh, the model parallelism is only used if the model takes too much memory to fit into a single GPU. In this case, you just distribute the model on two GPUs, like, here, like you see here. And uh, so the model is distributed among two GPUs. However, you still have a single batch that is shown here on the bottom. So you only have the same data set. And now you propagate the data set from the top layer to the bottom layer. And, you, and now you have to, of course, you have to, to exchange the activation functions when you down propagate. The model parallelism does not give any de decrease in the execution time. The only way on how to, to get a decrease in the execution time is the data parallelism. Here in data parallelism, we, yeah, we really distribute the data. And uh, so here what we see are two different batches, one for every GPU. Every GPU has a copy of the network of, 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 of the model. And now we'll down propagate every batch independently per GPU. So we go from the first to the last layer, go to the, and can compute the error and the local gradients. So every GPU computes its gradients because it has a different batch. Now, however, before we can continue, we, because the goal is always to have the same weights. So we must compute an average gradient and apply then, of course, the average gradient to all weights, and this assures us that we have a unique weight, weight update, and then we can proceed to the next step. This becomes perhaps a little bit 
clearer with this following animation. So here we want to implement the model parallelism on four GPUs. So first of all, we will have an identical copy of the model with the weights on the participating GPUs. Next, we will copy every input, input data batch and the target vectors to all participating GPUs. Before doing the actual weight update, we have to synchronize all gradients that are locally computed on every GPU. This algorithm is also known as stochastic gradient descent. In the way I have described it, it is a completely sequential algorithm, as we will have to wait until all local gradients are computed before progressing to the next time step. If you look for extreme scalability, this variable becomes of course a bottleneck. The workaround can be used to still allow gradients from previous time steps to be taken into account that are called delayed or stale gradients. In this case, we will implement an asynchronous variant. Okay, so now we have discussed about the software and now let us look at the hardware. And the hardware we will be using here, for example, a DGX1. And a DGX1 has two CPUs that you see on the top and then 8 volt uh, V100 GPUs. Here, the particular thing that we have to, to recognize or that we have to use is the NVLink interconnect. So there is a dedicated NVLink interconnect between the GPUs. This is shown here in green. And we will have to, to use this NVLink in order to distribute our computation. So how do we do this? Well, the first step is always, of course, from the CPU. Any data load will always start from, this, from the CPU. And uh, so you load first your batches, your different batches to the different GPUs from the CPU. And then you will do the gradient averaging over the NVLink. And in this way, you are making sure that the machine is fully loaded and you don't have any bottleneck or any congestion when you're distributing the workload like this. So now let me give a short introduction also into Horovod. So Horovod, is a, as I already mentioned, is a library for distributed deep learning. You can freely download it. It works with TensorFlow, Keras, PyTorch, and MXNet. So uh, there are a lot of examples out. It's, it simply installs with pip, and uh, it uses all the uh, what we, the good things that we know from HPC, from high performance computing. So for example, we will use a message passing interface or MPI. And MPI is behind the scenes behind a robot. So Horovod is completely based on an MPI approach. So domain decomposition approach that knows exactly where your tasks are running on which, uh, yeah, on which node and so on. And then can do the communication between your tasks and so on. So all the good things, uh, yeah, all the best things from this HPC approach are integrated automatically into Horobot, and if you stay to and, and and you can get it automatically. So Horobot also comes with a timeline. So this is this is what you can then use for perhaps do some performance debugging to see every, if everything is optimized and uh, to, you can get some additional background information. And uh, now let me explain a little bit how we have implemented now the Horobot with PyTorch. In NVIDIA, we centralize all containers under the NVIDIA GPU cloud or NGC. Let us see now how we can build a PyTorch Docker container from this repository. First, we will have to create a Docker a file called Docker file. In this Docker file, we will have the first line to indicate the base container from which we will actually start. So in our case, this is the NVIDIA container repository, NVCR, and we will be using the PyTorch colon 20.08 Python 3 container. Eventually, you can define a maintainer. Eventually, you can do all kinds of uh, pip installs. I already said that we need to do a pip install of Horovod, and we will have to clone the Horovod repository as well. And we will have also to clone the Torch to TRT repository. 
And then we can also define some working directory that we call here a slash workspace. Then we save this Docker file. And now we can actually do a Docker build of this Docker file by giving it a tag. And the tag here, the minus T, is webinar colon 01. Once I have built the Docker, then I can run it. This is done by simply saying docker run minus an interactive session minus it minus rm to remove all, everything when i'm leaving the docker and I, I will use all gpus here and then i have a minus v option that allows me to mount outside directories inside the containers and here for example i might i mount my personal projects directory into the workspace that we have defined in the docker file and then, of course, at the end, you will have to give the Docker name. So here, in my case, this is uh, GR Horobot PyTorch Webinar colon 01. Let me guide me a little bit now through the changes in your source code that you will need to do to, to correctly implement Horobot. Of course, the first one is to import Horobot.torch as Horobot. This is the first modification. Once you have done the, um, yeah. now you also have to do an Horovod in it. If you know, for example, the, on the MPI side of the world, you have an MPI in it. It's exactly the same thing. So MPI in it and Horovod in it, in it are doing the same, meaning you have, you have here on the bottom, you have the GPUs. And so they will find the GPUs that will participate in your computation and we'll give them a rank, okay? And here we'll have a local rank, that is a rank per, per node, and we have, of course, a global rank, uh, like, like in MPI, okay? And in this case, so Horobot will always start to find first all the GPUs that are necessary to do the computation, and then bind the ranks uh, to the, yeah, and then bind, bind the local rank to the, the Torch CUDA set device. This is all what you have to do. The next way concerns, concerns your optimizer. Anyway, you have already defined one that you are using in the sequential program. In this case here, for example, we are using the Stochastic Gradient Descent SGD optimizer. And now what we will do is we we'll just pass this optimizer into the distributed Horibot optimizer at the bottom of the page. Beside the, passing the optimizer, we can also define perhaps some, some compression. So we can do FP16 compression. We can have some more advanced algorithms to do the gradient updates like Adasam that is looking for the direction of the gradients and resulting in a better global weight update and less iterations to be used. Also, don't forget in the middle of the page, Whenever you will have to direct some work to specific tasks, you will have to indicate it, else the program will be executed by everyone. So here, the arcs local rank equals zero, make sure that only GPU zero will execute this line. If we come from a checkpoint, then first of all, first of all, we will have to broadcast the resume from epoch and again, this is only GPU zero that will do this in order to make sure that everybody has a good starting position to, uh, to, for, for the restart. Then what we will do is we will broadcast the parameters and optimizer states. This is for the automatic mixed position. And once we have done this, um, then we can also inform the loader to be multi-GPU at the bottom of the page, where we have the chart ID is equal to the local rank, and the number of shards will be to the uh, horobot size. Uh, one very delicate feature concerns the learning rate, because normally you think when, you, when I use very, very, very large budgets, because this is what, what it ends up, uh, that the, when I use all these very, very big patches, then my quality of the gradient is, is theoretically being better. So I compute uh, actually a better gradient, and uh, computing a better gradient 
naturally you think okay uh, then let me just apply a higher learning rate and uh, but if you do if you do this from the beginning this will not work because in the beginning the uh, yeah the behavior of the numerical behavior uh, until i start to get some convergence behavior or some normal convergence behavior at the beginning is really catastrophic so you cannot just multiply your learning rate in the beginning with a horrible size and uh, so the idea is here to have a certain number of start uh, of warm-up epochs and once the warm-up e epochs are done so during the warm-up epochs i use a very very small learning rate once uh, the warm-up e epochs are finished then i can fall back to the normal learning right and i can multiply it with the horror size because then i will get some uh, convergence and uh, we also implemented this so here on the bottom you see that the warm-up is uh, defined for the first five epochs and uh, here you you will have this very very small learning rate for the first five epochs and uh, and then you will switch over to the normal learning rate running whole robot is also very easy so here we see the mpr run minus np4 for python train.python so this one here will just run on four um, on four on four on four on four processes using four gpus and uh, on a single node and if I go multi-node, of course, I will have to define a server name and uh, how many GPUs I want to use per server. And I finish also with Python and the name of the training script. Let us now look at a couple of results. Let me first present some preliminary results that we got with our code base on a DGX station with four GPUs, V100. We are using here Horobot with Dali and automatic mix precision. So we, when we go from one to two GPUs, we get a one and a half times speed up, and then we get a linear speed up from two to four GPUs. I also promised you to show Horobot in Exascale, and this work here is published in Climate Analytics, where we where they use two different networks. One is called Tiramisu and the other one deep lab v3 and uh, they run here on summit the biggest cluster in the world with 25,000 gpus and on the left we first see that the code is perfectly scaling with floating point 32 this is the blue the blue uh, the blue lines and we get close to the theoretical limit of floating point 32 scalability then of course you can implement half position and in this case you get the light red curve and you get even more 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 performance out of this cluster and finally what you all can also allow are the delayed gradients so if i allow delayed stale gradients from uh, the last iteration then i come to the final red curve that is very very close to the perfect line of perfect scaling Let me finish with a couple of useful resources. So first of all, the PyTorch tutorials contain a lot of, lot of multi-GPU examples. So please go to pytorch.org or to the PyTorch GitHub site. You can also have a lot of examples on the Horrible GitHub and uh, a lot of tutorials concern TensorFlow if you're interested in to test another framework. We also propose a, day, a full day workshop that is the Deep Learning Institute on the fundamentals of multi-GPU that is now in an ambassador program. Click on the link below to get more information. Also, you can have a lot of, a lot of information for the automatic mix precision. So first of all, the package itself can be obtained from pytorch.org, docs and the masters. And a lot of examples are on the automatic mix precision examples. This was the end of my session. Please feel free to ask any question you like.